Good to see you back. Yeah, so I used to last meeting. Yes, plan that well. <laughs> okay, we are live. All right, y'all, we're going to get started. Uh, this is the August 3rd, 2022 meeting of the City of Charleston Board of Zoning Appeals and Site Design. Present are Jeff Webb, Kelvin Eugene, Jennifer DeCantis, myself, Joel Adrian. Present from city staff are Eric Schultz, Lee Batchel. These proceedings are being recorded. We ask that those who speak identify themselves for the record. We will conduct this meeting in usual fashion. We'll first hear from city staff about the application and their recommendation. <clears throat> if the recommendation is favorable and no one objects to the recommendation, usually the board is only appeals, treats the matter as being uncontested passes it as a matter of course. If, however, he recommends against the application or there is opposition to the application, treat the application as contested and hear from the applicant and anyone else who is in favor of the application. Next, we hear from anyone opposed, followed by a short rebuttal from the applicant. We then close the public portion, hearing portion of the meeting for that particular application and open discussion to the board's only appeals members. Uh, only. We'll then make a decision to approve Approve with conditions or deny the application. Board of Zoning Appeals site design has the authority to do three things. One, hear appeals to decisions of the zoning administrator. Two, grant special exceptions of fact finding function of the board. Three, grant variances to the zoning ordinance if the application meets the hardship test outlined in section 54 924 of the ordinance. The board may deliberate, make a final decision on a matter by a majority of votes of members present at the hearing and qualified to vote, provided that not less than a quorum are present to qualify to vote. For a variance to be granted, the board's only appeals must make the following findings. A, there are extraordinary and exceptional conditions pertaining to a particular piece of property. B, these conditions do not generally apply to other property in the vicinity. C, because of these conditions, the application of the ordinance to the particular piece of property would effectively prohibit or unreasonably restrict the utilization of the property. And finally, D, the authorization of a variance would not be a substantial detriment to the adjacent property or the public good. The character of the district would not be harmed by the granting of the variance. And that we will go to our... Uh, for the record, uh, Mr. Right. Chairman, item B3, if anybody's here for 2815, Clements Ferry Road that has been deferred. It will not be heard tonight. You're welcome to stay. Enjoy. <laughs> um, the, uh, the first item will be a review of uh, the minutes from last month's meeting. Um, if there are any questions uh, about the minutes, if not, maybe a motion to approve. So it's on a couple slides here just to go through them. It was a, a, a had a number of items on that agenda. Some were deferred, but you have uh, one through three, four through seven, and eight through eleven. I'll make a motion for approval on that. Second. All right. This motion is for approval. All in favor, say aye in favor. Aye in favor. Aye in favor. Anyone opposed? Nay, not in favor. Is approved. Uh, yes. So I think I got my slides a little out of order and I apologize for that. So we'll go with my slides. So I think on our long form we have um, 1757 as A2, but we'll take that first. So this item. Agenda 82 is uh, 1757 Sam Rittenberg Boulevard. The uh, TMS number is um, 351-11-0003 and 004. Um, don't have an application number on the form. It's about there. 
That's okay. okay. Um, so it is uh, requested variance with section 54327 to omit the 15 protected trees per acre requirement. Request a variance in section 54330 to allow reduced impervious construction setback near the basis of protected trees. Request a variance in section 54347 to allow reduced landscape buffering with adjacent, uh, with adjacent to Ashley River Road. And finally, request a variance in section 54347 to allow reduced landscape buffer with adjacent to Sam Ritman. For the record, um, Mr. Ravenel has joined the meeting as well. Okay, so this was the application that was scheduled to be heard, or submitted, scheduled to be heard on July, at the July meeting. It was deferred for um, a couple of issues. Um, this is their statement of how they feel they need the hardship test. So, um, as stated, this is GB pending. So it has received, currently the properties are in the county, Charleston County, it's received first reading at city council for annexation and um, assign a zoning of GB, so therefore they can move forward. So they're kind of in their due diligence period uh, with the project. So they're the two corner uh, lots at the intersection of San Rittenberg and Ashley River Road. <coughs> No color assigned to them yet, but uh, eventually, if it continues, it will have a red coloring of GB. So today, the existing or the now closed first, um, or actually Wells Fargo Bank is dark. Um, you can see the main bank building, and then the smaller structure was the drive-through teller. Note the large tree in the center, um, 29-inch live oak. Um, legal not conforming if it were to be in the city um, because obviously I, I don't know when the, the bank was built but um, you know since that time we're in the county they might not have had uh, landscape buffers adjacent to San Rittenberg or Ashley River Road so as you see if it were in the city it would be legal not conforming. The project is to scrape the, um, the bank and build a um, gas station with a convenience store. So when it's in GB under that zoning, uh, we have very uh, specific requirements. Note the neighborhood, if you will, the cul-de-sac to the uh, northeast, if you will, on this plan. Um, some of those properties are zoned commercially in the county, but others are used as residents. So we have rules on the books that require the gas tanks, emergency shutoff valves, all that sort of thing associated with a gas station to be certain distance from those structures. So it makes uh, uh, land planning a little bit more difficult. Survey of the existing conditions. We have two large live oaks planned right in the five foot landscape strip of the neighboring property, the 29 inch live oak in the center, and then of course the buildings and existing parking. This is a blow up. I want to just stress the 29 inch live oak that was a point of um, concern with the city uh, when they submitted originally they were um, planning to remove that and uh, i thought the plan needed a little further study it's a very nice live oak so they came back with this plan and i'll explain it a little further with an overlay but uh, you can see the 29 inch live oak is being preserved in this center they had to kind of shuffle their buildings around. Um, they went back to DRB staff and had some preliminary discussions with DRB uh, about the placement of the gas canopy on the corner. That's not typical in an urban <coughs> setting. You would maybe rather have the convenience store anchor the corner and then pumps to the side and rear. But um, based on the, the notion that the tree would be preserved and, you know, it, going through DRB with uh, very high scrutiny on the um, architectural features, um, I think received a positive nod. You can see the uh, green lines represent the required landscape buffers. On Ashley River Road up to this point, it's 15 foot from St. Andrews up to Sam Rittenberg, and then Sam Rittenberg requires a 25 foot landscape buffer. The trees are grand, as you can see. 
The X tree is a uh, red maple, existing red maple that was planted years ago. I assume with the bank, and it's in not so good shape. Hence, that's why we're addressing the 15 trees with acre requirement. So here's uh, kind of the overlay over top of the aerial image. So you can start to see that we do gain some buffer in some areas. Um, some of it's maintained as is today. Uh, the tree and the existing curbing that's around that tree. I was very concerned about how to preserve that tree in the center. So I think it's going to, if this proceeds, it's going to anchor and be a very delightful setting between both the gas canopy and the, the convenience support. This slide again shows, um, again, it's their overlay of the existing conditions. And um, I was very concerned about maintaining the existing curbing around that tree, at least on the planned south side. And then they'll cut through that grass or that planting median or that median, if you will, or that planted area to install parking. So I think we'll be in pretty good shape and give the tree its necessary soil volume. There's the maple that's in not so good shape. This shows the um, the existing exit or uh, exit lane from the tellers. So there are the two grand trees on the one side that are in a limited soil volume. They actually gain some soil volume with this plan. This being actually we have a road buffer. We're going to have a, a, a little bit of a battle with our good friends with Dominion Energy. I'd love to see live oaks planted along the Ashley River corridor, but because of the overhead lines, that may not be possible. But we're going to, um, you'll see that one of my conditions is to meet with Dominion and figure out what plant material we can get underneath their uh, overhead and um, have a very good looking landscape. There's the 29 inch live oak. Um, you can see that curb line will be maintained. They'll cut, they'll demolish the teller, obviously, uh, with care, and then cut through that green space, if you will, on the right side to allow some parking. <clears throat> A view again of the Ashley River Road buffer for conditions. The same Rittenberg Boulevard buffer conditions. Again, we'll have the same issue with overhead lines here. Uh, so we'll try and get substantial trees in there, but uh, again, we don't want them to be uh, pruned by the utility. And the existing edge conditions will actually uh, very carefully remove some of that curbing and asphalt to give those trees a little more um, soil volume. And the red maple. So, with that said, um, staff recommends approval with the condition to plant five caliber inches for the protected tree, plus use four foot chain link fences, tree protection barricades, plus have a certified arborist prune and treat the trees to be preserved, plus have a certified arborist develop a specific tree preservation plan for the 29 inch live oak to be approved by staff and then implemented. Must work with the many energy as to the feasibility of planting live oaks on the Ashley River Road and San Rittenberg Boulevard frontage within the buffer. Must provide a landscape plan for both DRB and TRC approval. And then must meet requirements recommendations from the DRB on the Ashley River Road and San Rittenberg Boulevard frontages. I suspect that there may be a small brick screen wall introduced of some sort, some kind of built element to help screen the surface parking. So with that said, I'll go back to the site plan. Oops. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Eric. He's the applicant present. Mm -hmm. Would you like to be heard? Um, no, Eric did a great job, but we're here with the next question. All right. If you would just state your name. Oh, sure. Andrew Todd Barrett with Gilly Moore. Um, is there anybody present that is in favor of the application that would like to be heard? Uh, 
Audrey Alexander, 1400 Park Shore Drive, Charleston, uh, city resident. Um, it was a, a great presentation that City Council, uh, Councilman Shade, helped facilitate along with Mayor Tecklenburg. Uh, the redevelopment of this corner, uh, if many of you know, I drive through the intersection three, four times a day. We've got a dilapidated Burger King on one side. Uh, there's another uh, building which house can tell, which we don't know what's going on with it, but it's a pretty big mess. Um, so uh, we're looking at, you know, not only utilizing this corner, you know, making it productive again, but uh, it's going to generate city taxes. It's going to generate employment. It's going to generate, um, more importantly, it will help the 10th district for Sam Rittenberg Boulevard, which we've been working on for years to develop from Ashley Town Landing all the way to Citadel Mall. So there are many benefits uh, for the city and the citizens and the residents of the area. And having worked with uh, partners on their facility on Orange Grove Road, uh, we know that it will be a very nice design. They are uh, community oriented. They have met with I'm not sure on this site, but when we did Orange Grove Road, very involved with the community and, and uh, uh, listened. And I think they developed something very nice over there, and I would anticipate they would do the same thing at this point. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, board members. Peter Shea at the Soft City Council, um, also a, the chairman of the Revitalization Commission for. Ms. Ashley, I support the uh, project, the applicant's um, request with the staff's recommendations um, to reiterate some of the things that my uh, predecessor, Alexander, mentioned to you. Um, we partners developed or uh, redeveloped the old Exxon gas station on the corner of Orange Grove Road and it's at Wittenberg. Uh, the city, I think, put them through a pretty tough uh, ringer in the criteria that they had to go through. So we know that their uh, past history is very good. They work very well with the city. They comply with all the things we asked, particularly when it came to uh, flood management issues. Um, they jump right on that and other issues that they needed to comply with to redevelop that site. <clears throat> as Mr. Alexander mentioned to you earlier, this was, in, as Mr. Schultz mentioned to you, this uh, property was located in the county. They have moved to annex it into the city of Charleston. It's on a very busy highway, uh, uh, Sam Wittenberg uh, at St. Andrews Boulevard. Across the street is a, a gas station slash car wash. Uh, on the other corner is an abandoned um, Burger King and a jewelry store on the other side of us. Um, I'm very familiar with the uh, neighborhood behind uh, this property. Uh, my son actually lived there for a period of time, he and his wife. Which is really interesting because Pinecrest, a good portion of it, is not in, in the city. Still in the unannexed un part of the, of the county. So I, I see that the requirements that are needed here are, are not going to cause harm or do uh, violence to the, to the neighborhood. Um, you, you're on a very busy corner, lot, tra heavily traveled. Uh, what they have uh, planned for this, I think, will fit into the overall scheme of our efforts to revitalize this, actually, uh, and to, I think, I'm sure they'd be able to with those requirements that the staff has recommended. So I'd ask the board to uh, approve this application with the requirements of staff. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anything you want to be heard? Yeah, can I ask the uh, representative from the park to review the My name is Maurice Harper. I'm from Houston, Texas. I'm one of the owner of the Porter Parcel. The other parcel is owned by Mrs. Uh, Ermgard Titus. She just turned 100 years old, so she's not here. And her daughter is here, and her granddaughter is here. So she's 100. That makes the average age of the two owners 90. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm very pleased with Parker's. And I'm pleased to be in South Carolina. My wife's native home, my grandparents' native home. So I, I'm not, I wasn't born in Texas. And the ones are kicking and screaming, but, but I'm there. I'm pleased with the project as, as it now stands. Uh, but I would say that it is rare to attract 
a company of Parker's reputation in today's market. I don't know if any of you are involved in commercial real estate. I've owned that corner since 1983. Mrs. Titus has owned her parcel immediately adjacent to mine since 1982, so we're both well acquainted with the neighborhood. We're not a build it, sell it, and go to the next one. We're building it and keeping it. So we want to do something that's as good for us as it is for the county. But the real estate market has changed due to COVID. There are there's not near the amount of expansion in the marketplace by fast food, by oil companies, by whatever. Uh, many companies have reduced their facilities in size and in use. Most banks now are being built without drive through, just with a drive through ATM or no drive through teller. So it's tough to find somebody, and it's not been easy for me, for Ms. Titus, or for partners to work through. Uh, two properties, two owners, seven lawyers, uh, two environmental firms, and two state agencies to get to this point. So I'm not against anything that uh, was proposed as a condition, but I would urge the uh, this this board to be considerate and reasonable. Should we run into problems with Dominion, mm -hmm. having negotiated with Dominion on its former site? They're not the easiest people in the world to deal with. It's kind of their way on the highway. I see a few smiles on the faces there. So I would just ask you to be reasonable when we come back and say we did our best, and here's what we can work with. I think this is a wonderful commitment for the community, and I think that Parkers will again do a wonderful job and it will help increase the real estate taxes, gasoline taxes, sales taxes, and all those other things once it is annexed into the city. But I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Anybody else, President, wants to be heard in favor of the application? Susan Cannon. My address is 1011 Southgate Drive, and it's in Northbridge Terrace. And I'm here today because when I initially heard of the proposal, I know Parker is from having where they are on Orange Grove. And so I have a lot of confidence in them. And they had a lot of community meetings. They were very interested in what we all thought. So I thought it sounded good that Parker's was going to locate where the vacant lot is where Wells Fargo was. But then I learned that the Grand Oak would be taken down. And I thought I, I just can't support it. So I'm really thrilled and proud of Parker's that they are fighting this, that they want to try to preserve that grand oak and i think it is gorgeous and it just means a lot to have it on that lot so i just wanted to express my thanks to them and to give my full support thank you can i have one thing to like to add? i'm also protecting the tree but that tree's drip line represents about 700 square feet of land so when you're saying, well, we don't have enough land to do this, 700 square feet are protecting that one tree. Thank you. Um, anybody else present that would like to be heard in favor of the application? And is there anybody present that is opposed that would like to be heard? Well, this is application to the public to be open to the board uh, for discussion or questions. Um, I'll start, uh, Eric. I think if you could put up next slide that shows the overlay. Oh, uh, next, next. Oh. Um, this is, in my opinion, probably the most important, important slide because you can see the increased landscape buffer on um, uh, Sam Rittenberg and that the existing buffer that they have on uh, basically the same as it changed. Uh, I do think the saving of that tree was is critical um, and I believe that there's enough area at the corner to help you know, to landscape and address the impact of the house being in the front corner versus on that corner so I believe that the staff and applicant have done a great job in addressing things and the application is the winner in my opinion. What is the buffer between the neighborhood? I'm more concerned about the buffer between the neighborhood. So, um, 
the applicant can speak to that, but there's a zoning in the county that I think is commercial, uh, community commercial. So they're commercially zoned with an overlay. However, they're being used as a residence, a dwelling. So there's there's the rule that kicks in on the city side about having pumps and uh, emergency valves and vents a certain distance from those. So there is no landscape requirement on that side except for the five foot landscape strip between any vehicle use area. That would be that cross hatch area where the loading zone is by the dumpsters. I for one, I'm, I'm certainly for it. I think it's great that they saved the live oak and I'd much rather see a healthy thriving oak interior to the lot than be chopped up by Dominion every couple of years. So um, it's obviously a challenging project with the placement of the trees where they are and regulation. So I'm in favor of uh, approving this on my part. I'd like to make a motion to approve. Second. I'll second. Step with the conditions. Yes. Right. Adjusted by staff. Uh, so motion for approval of staff conditions. Um, is there a, uh, all in favor say aye in favor? Aye in favor. Aye in favor. Aye in favor. Anybody opposed? Nay, not in favor. That is approved. Uh, five zero. Thank you. Good time. All right. So now, Eric has A1 as the next slide. It's A2, but it's A1. <laughs> I'm going for Sorry for that. I'm going to go to A8. A8. Um, I'll let these people exit. Okay. Sorry. My next item is uh, 97 line and 267 coming street. Uh, the TMS numbers are. Four six zero zero eight zero one one nine two and one nine nine. Uh, request a variance from section fifty four three twenty seven to allow the removal of one grand tree. Request a special exception from section fifty four three twenty seven to allow the removal of two grand trees. And request a variance from section fifty four three twenty seven to omit fifteen protected trees per acre requirement zone DR two F. Okay, so I forget. Who was here last month, but you're going to hear my spiel again. I went through it and then we discovered that the applicant had a uh, conflict and was not present, so we all elected to defer it. So, um, this is the application that again was submitted for the July meeting. The properties involved are uh, these two one fronting on Line Street, one fronting on Cumming, and the development really incorporates the corner property zone CT. In the end, these are zone DR2F. As you can see, there's a historic structure on the corner which is going through a renovation presently, and then two vacant lots, um, fairly open, with some what I would consider volunteer trees. This is the surveys. So you can see how they're clustered, uh, obviously not planted. Um, three along the common property line to the south and then a, a little cluster and I I did not go to the sand board maps to figure out what pre-existed but um, I think I saw some remnant foundations that there was probably a couple of structures that fronted on Lime Street at the, in the past. This is the tree list. The photos that the applicant submitted. So Upon my site inspection, I broke it up into picture frame here. So we have a lacustrum uh, left of the what thought was thought or surveyed to be a grand tree, but I, I measured it several times. It came up 23.6 as an elm, so it is a non-grand. So that's the center tree, and then we have a small um, pecan to the right there on that on the southern property line. Moving to the cluster that's in midway, if you will, um, the left is a pecan. It was surveyed as near being grand. It's not it's <coughs> non grand. Then you do have the middle tree, the large one with the slight lean as a 25 inch pecan. So that's the variance tree. And 
then to the right of that middle right, you have a pecan that's leaning and you know trying to seek light away from the larger tree, and then you have a elm with the pink ribbon behind the soil pile there. And then, of course, you have a mulberry that's near the eastern boundary between the historic structure under renovation and the. <clears throat> so. The proposal is this um, the under DR uh, 2F. Uh, they have enough lot area to um, build a number of uh, residential structures. So that's what you see. You see four kind of stacked behind each other, perpendicular to the line, and then two on the lot that's perpendicular to Cumming Street. The small structure in between is actually going to be a enclosed uh, car lift system. So to meet their parking requirements, they'll have several surface uh parking spaces and then they'll have a, a a building in which you'll enter and you'll be able to put your car onto a i believe it's a rotisserie type car lift inside and be out of the weather so uh you can see that you know with the, the traffic flow moving from coming and exiting on the line the maneuverability of the surface spaces, the structures, uh, this will all be required to go through BAR south of Line Street. And um, you can see some open space, some green space that they're uh, cool. <coughs> plugging some trees. But based on the quality of the trees and um, you know the allowable density, um, staff is prepared to recommend approval. the conditions that 48 caliber inches of native canopy trees be planted on the project site and or in the form of a monetary contribution so we'll uh, ask for a landscape plan they'll figure out what size trees they can fit and then the residual inches may be in the form of a contribution to the street tree program all right thank you eric applicant's presence hey very sorry for my absence last week or last month that was uh unforeseen um if i'm being honest it was because i really thought it was still zoom and i normally get an email from scott <laughs> two days before reminding me of me and it goes on my calendar so that's definitely my fault it was, it was uh, uh eric called me after the meeting and i was all i was already in columbia so i uh i, I apologize and i appreciate y'all's deferral um <clears throat> eric did a very good job presenting this project this is in essence, three properties. There's a 95 Line Street corner property building, uh, and and the 267 Cummings, uh, both with one owner, and then there's the 97 Line Street that has a separate owner. So there's three properties. The goal here is to create a project, singular project, without changing the lines. So <clears throat> we have some we have some constraints trying to create a trying to create a project and keeping the existing property lines, other than there's a small property line adjustment for 95 Line Street. Um, that we believe has been working on that a little bit, um, just, to, just to encompass some addition that was previously done on that, on that specific lot. Um, well, um, that, that's kind of an aside. Um, regarding the, the parking structure, which is kind of a different aspect of this project, because 267 coming and 95 Line Street have the same owner. Currently, the, the property exists. Currently, 97 Line Street. Um, I can probably show you guys this. This is this is the this is the 10-year parking easement uh, that provides parking for 95 Line Street through a 10-year through a 10-year 10-year uh, uh, parking lease. So currently, it operates as a as a, as a parking lot. That whole property. And the idea is that. Is that is that when this parking carousel comes online, it will serve the 267 and the 95 Line Street properties wholly with the one owner, and then the other the other property will work within itself to provide access easements and such. But there's there, there won't be a, a change in ownership there. Long story short, both both property owners are behind. 
So um, everybody's everybody's happy at the moment. Um, <clears throat> so that said, the the, the the variance tree is is this tree. It's, it's a it's a TO five. Um, the 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 two that I we mismeasured, I'll say, um, are um, are were protected, which makes it um, which which one of them is one of them is right here, and I think this one was badly mismeasured in my in, in my estimation, just because it had a knot in the wrong spot. <laughs> um, long story short, and um, so so that's that. Three properties going to stay the same. Park and carousel. Uh, requires the removal of these trees just because that's going to be a concrete structure. Its alignment required the driveway to be, to be very straight in, to be very straight in. Um, uh, uh, these arrows actually will, are reversed in the, in the current plan. The, 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 the driveway is come straight in here and they, and they pull out on Cumming Street. So that's the, that's, that was, that was, uh, that was, Found after the smell, but I didn't, we didn't we didn't change that. But that's the that's the idea there, it's, it, and that's what requires that straight shot in because it does the alignment and the, the, the way that that, that works. Um, uh, so that said, the, the gentleman that was here earlier actually owns this property, and um, the, to the to the south, and on that and and Bob. And this whole project to be able to be a singular project as shown requires a setback variance as well. So he's been involved, he's been, we've been in discussions with, with Bob on that specific item. And um, he has requested that if approved or if, if, if recommended for approval, that, that, that the neighboring property owner to the south um, be able to provide approval uh, um, uh, um, sent to the removal of those three trees. So he, the, the neighbors, is, and, and our, and our, our the, the owner, our client, has uh, accepted that as a as a as a request and asked me to ask the board to if 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 so moved that they add that as a contingency. That's a that's a random. Things I've never said before. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, anything else that you need? No, that's it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Ringabell is present. I'd like to speak in favor of the application. If the president is opposed, I would like to speak. And close the application to the public and open the board for discussion and questions. How many cars in the little carousel? Eight. Eight? Uh, proposition. <laughs> I think um, see who's in favor. There's nobody opposed. <coughs> the trees don't look like they're any A, B, or C grade trees. Um, I'm not sure we can be conditioned that the neighbor wants. Right. I don't think we can legally have that. If I understand you're saying your neighbor wants to have some level of um, authority in terms of the removal of those trees. Go ahead. So, um, I, we, we were un, I was trying to find a way for Bob's request to be to be spoken in here, and he was here and, and mentioned that. I, I did not. I thought that there would be the ability for that to occur. Um, I did realize that sometimes contingencies in various meetings can't be provided. In, in theory, um, could it be a staff? Could it be a staff recommendation, possibly? Eric. What's that? Could that be a staff recommendation to get a Well, I'm, I'm looking at the survey, and you know, when I was out there, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not looking for survey pins or anything like that. But there was clearly a fence there, and they were on this side of the fence, 
So I assumed they were clearly on your property, and it, the survey kind of shows that. So well, he, he didn't say technically whether they were or were not property line trees. Right. My question would be: Is this something that staff could say that, that they need that they need consent from the neighbor? Um, they need consent to, from the neighbor on those removals to the vicinity of the property line. Can we see a photo of the trees in question? It, looked, it appears to me that that wood fence was recently constructed and there's the chain link behind it between the trees and the wood fence. <clears throat> I, I, it, 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 I mean, this is, I, I'm, I'm not normally in this position. Um, <clears throat> it would seem appropriate that, that the staff could put in there as, as, a, as a recommendation to, to require the neighbor to provide consent for removal of those two trees. That would help us out. Yeah, I don't know if we can do that, but um, maybe we could encourage you to work with the neighbor. And if they have some want of that elm, for example, um, I mean, it seems to me that that would be the only reason that he would be requesting this. Was he here in opposition to the he application? Was not, he, he, he wanted us to he, he is, I'm relaying as close to what <laughs> is possible. He has, he has no, um, it, here's, this is what he wants. He doesn't want if the setback variance gets a, does not get passed for some reason, he doesn't want that tree removed. <laughs> and because at that point, zoning is the one that will review the setback variance. Mm -hmm. variance. Um, so we could back. put condition in that tree removal should not occur until zoning approval of it. I think that that would actually be exactly what he's asking. I, that, I think we could add because we would be saying yes you're approved to remove those trees but I don't even know that you'd be able to remove them until you are ready to permit and build. Exactly. So but he's exactly. being protected this way so I, I think we could do that. <clears throat> Say that uh, the application needs to make it through the other zoning board for their approval of that setback variance before yes. any tree removal is done on the property. That's right. That's exactly right. Thank you. So motion, to, the card so motion to approve with staff recommendations with the addition that the no tree removal setback right. variance be granted prior to any tree removal on site. Just these trees. Yeah, you can specifically say those three trees. trees. Yeah, the boundary trees. Couldn't repeat that if you asked me to, so I was going to go ahead. Yeah. There's your second. <laughs> or is there any other discussion? Uh, discussion or questions? Go ahead. No, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with. I don't think the neighbor has that ability. Like the trees are on his lot. I just, I don't. Right, the neighbor does it, but uh, we, I think, do have the authority to say no tree right. removal until you've received your other variance that's required. Uh, sure. I, I, as a condition. Right. We're saying you can remove them. You just got to get this next approval before you do it. But if you were not granted the piece setback approval, If they don't get the setback variance, the project dies. The project dies. It gets significant. Tower it gets significantly changed, which then we would have to do it. You'd have, have to come back. You'd have to come back. Yeah. It's a substantial change. The, 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 I think to say my motion again, do I? <laughs> There's a second. I already read back what the motion was. I can, I can read what I'm writing. <laughs> 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 Approval with conditions recommended by staff and additional condition. The 
boundary trees along the south side of property line shall not be removed unless the setback variance along that side of property line is granted by the city. That's okay. I was still with that. I mean, I, I'm here not opposed to it. They'll stay. In reality, the seven variants is still saying. So we have a win-win, I think, in the board of the second motion. I'll second. All right. They were say I in favor. I in favor. I in favor. Those opposed may not favor. I enjoy I just, I, okay. I, I, I'm struggling with it. <laughs> so that was Ruthie and then Jeff. Ruthie yes. and Jeff. Right. Yeah. And then uh, five, five oh. yeah. so Thank you. Thank you. It's yeah. perfect. I appreciate your struggling through that. Thank you. Congratulations. All right. So our next item is going to be item uh, B1. B1 is 3588 Main Bank Highway, the TMS number 279 130 Request a variance from section 54327 to allow reduced landscape buffer width adjacent to Bank. Uh, request a variance from section 54347 to allow reduced landscape buffer width adjacent to uh, SR1 zone parcel. And this is uh, zone L. Okay, this is the um, application. This is the corner property at uh, Walpole Way and Maybank Highway, just a uh, stone's throw away from the intersection of Bowick at Main and Maybank, zone LB. And you can see that the parcel adjacent to it is in the city in zone SR1. And of course, to the east, you have a couple that are zone residential office. And then Obviously, on the corner, the signalized corner, you have a more intense use of GP. Aerial view of the corner. Um, some significant trees. Um, upon my inspection, a couple of them had been removed. So I did my tree count, and this is a 0.34 acre site. So they're already required to maintain six trees, and there's six trees, more than six trees remaining on site. Uh, survey of existing conditions. I have no idea what the previous use might have been. Um, the siding of the structure has been removed. I don't know if it was ever used commercially. I didn't check our uh, business license um, database, but um, see there's no real formalized driveway curb cut, if you will. There was a, a patio with a structure over it. When you go back and look at Google Earth, that's been removed, and then a couple of pine trees removed behind the structure. So is to do a significant renovation to the main body of the building. There will be some demolition to the rear, and then a new addition um, and remodel, if you will, the, the principal uh, shell, if you will, with the front door remaining on the front. Um, and said to be proposed to be a nail salon. So that's a um, retail and personal service under our parking requirements. So you, it's based on gross square footage and with the addition and remodel, it's, uh, it's uh, 1,600 and some change, which requires nine parking spaces. And they're proposing uh, 14 here as it's laid out. The next slide shows if you overlay the buffers, Maybank has a 75 foot. It's obviously within 1,400 feet of the intersection of, of uh, Maine and Maybank. So the DRB, we have a, an exception where the DRB can allow structures to encroach into that 75 foot landscape buffer, but no other improvements such as parking. So obviously it's the whole building's in, in it now, legal non-conforming, but if you improve it. And then against the SR1 zone property, you have a 25-foot landscape buffer 
requirement, and that's that gray strip. And then a five foot landscape strip on uh, Walpole between any vehicle use area and the abutting property line. So that's that little strip you see there. So pretty significant impact if you were to apply the buffers. This kind of shows the new structure dimensions. I think it grows in total length by uh, 15 feet, I believe, 10 feet, 15 feet. This is the layout. I just wanted to show you that. And so you see here, you see here the gross square footage. Our requirement is one per 200 uh, square feet of gross area, so 1615. Uh, thus, nine parking spaces are required, and they're showing 14 including the ADA space. And just some renderings of uh, what the structure would potentially become. This is under DRB jurisdiction, so I have to go through DRB. I'm not sh sure if it will go to the full board or be handling staff, I'm not sure. So I took a trip out there, um, obviously, and you can see that they stripped the siding, they removed the little lean to that was over that patio. So I'm at the corner of Walpole and, and I'm working my way around the building uh, clockwise, if you will. So now I'm in that corner closest to Maybank and Maine, looking parallel with uh, Maybank. Now I'm in Walpole looking against that where the 25 foot landscape buffer is required. You can see there's numerous trees along that common property line. Now I'm back inside the property looking back. So uh, there's been a lot of dialogue apparently between the owner and the owner of the neighboring property. Um, I know that the neighboring property has concerns um, has voice concerns. So in preparation for this meeting, it, you know, it's my job, my charge to try and figure out the study, do they meet the hardship test? I mean, when you look at the, the property and they don't want to do a scrape, a rebuild, and want to utilize the existing building and apply the buffers, there's no way you can have a curb cut on Maybank. So you're going to have to come in off of Walpole. Um, but is does this meet the hardship and i would think it doesn't uh, because i think they're over park number one um, i understand the business may have clientele come and go um, you know on a rotation type basis but so how could we get to a point where maybe we could support something um, meeting the hardship test so I developed a sketch and I asked the applicant to get with the adjacent neighbor to discuss this and I got a report back today that they wanted to move forward. But this is, an, this is a concept which if you were to eliminate the 90 degree parking against that neighboring property, in my opinion, you could achieve a 12 and a half foot landscape buffer against the SR1 property. <laughs> and then go from a nine foot buffer closest to Maybank, that point, if you will, by sacrificing one tree, and they can meet the 15 trees per acre requirement and shift and add a space in that encroachment into, you can maintain a 12 foot buffer along at the narrowest point along Maybank and provide 11 spaces. So two over the minimum. Um, so I know, I don't think the neighbor has seen this sketch, but um, it's up for discussion and it's a recommendation from the city. So with that said, um, if the meeting progresses in maybe a favorable um, tone, the city would recommend that must provide a 12 and a half foot landscape buffer adjacent to the SR1 parcel with a six foot opaque wood fence and a built structure adjacent to the parallel parking spaces as shown on the recommendation. I'll go back and talk about that. Um, must maintain the protected trees on site except for the 15-inch oak in order to shift parking spaces encroaching into the Maybank 
highway buffer and provide a well foot landscape buffer with a screening element as shown on the city recommendation. And then of course, must provide a landscape plan and landscape element details for both DRB and staff review. So if this were to be approved and built, my fear is how do you how do you not have those parallel spaces eventually convert to head-on spaces over time? So at the uh, parallel parking edge, there would have to be a low uh, cottage garden type fence, uh, maybe a two rail split rail or bollards that are decorative and spaced um, close enough that you couldn't get cars in between and then truly landscape that area as a, as a garden, if you will. And then of course, uh, provide some sort of screening element on the Maybank side that ties into the architecture of the building and of course, additional landscaping. Thank you, Aaron. Um, yeah, the present. Good evening, Josh Lilly with Stantec. Um, yes, Eric and I did talk about his, his sketch this afternoon, and I talked with the property owner and um, who's going to make the project, and we are in agreement with that, with that concept. Um, it does uh, increase the buffer along the single family from, I think, we had six feet to 12 and a half. Which is this production of that buffer. Um, as you can see by that one graphic with the gray, there's really, really not a whole lot you can do on the property with it being limited business. Um, of course, here we'll talk about the existing structure, but it's, it's a vacant and what we believe is a residential structure that's been vacant for quite a while. Um, but we can answer any questions you all have. Colonel George, for a second. Yeah. All right, thank you. Hey, I'm George Grassick. I've uh, lived on Johns Island since uh, 1990. I've, uh, <clears throat> over the years, purchased properties and renovated them for small businesses to use on the island. And I picked this one up uh, first part of the year. And uh, the history of the building is, is that uh, Berkeley Electric says there's been no uh, electrical service in the building since uh, 1970. I mean, since 2017. And same with water. However, when I did inspect the property there, it did appear that people were living in there and there was significant evidence of, uh, of drug use in, in, in the building. Uh, it's uh, been pretty much ransacked and uh, we uh, tried to increase our liability by cleaning the site up somewhat and now we're ready to renovate it for use of a uh, um, gentleman approached me uh, when I had it listed. Uh, he runs spas in uh, nail salons in Greenville and Florence and he wants to put one here and he thought it was a great spot. He doesn't like the ones that are in strip malls. And so he wants a 10 year lease on this. So this is what it's going to be for significant length of time. And as you can see from that, we do need, um, we do need parking. And uh, that triangle is not, not adequate. Uh, if you look at down the corridor here along Maybank, there's six other homes uh, similar to this. That, uh, uh, only two of them right now are still homes. So this will be four out of six have been converted into small business use. And so this is kind of like uh, I, what I think is the best use for this property right now is to be a, a, a business use. It's on a major uh, highway, it's down at an intersection, and um, it really doesn't make, uh, I, I don't think it would be uh, well received as a house by somebody that purchased it. Uh, so we decided since it is owned under the business, so we go with the business uh, uh, renovation. And we'd like to put a very attractive little house there, very similar to the architects who's <coughs> on the other corner. We're kind of in the contest to see who has the cutest little house. And so uh, that's where we stand. And well, all we're asking from you is that we have a, an opportunity to do this by having uh, a business model for work for tenant, which is at this parking. All right, thank you. I'll be happy to answer any questions if you have any. Uh... Not right now. No. Okay. Anybody else present that's in favor of the application? Any present that is opposed, I would like to be heard. Arlene Sessions, uh, my husband and I own property that abuts his property on two areas. 
the one I'm concerned with is the residential. I wish I would have had Eric's um, design before I got here uh, because the concern is a, a parking lot next to a residential home is a very noisy place. Then, you know, you wouldn't assume so, but you have traffic coming and going. Uh, the last design that I saw was 14 places, uh, parking places next to a home um, or in very close proximity. You not only have the car coming and going, you have the door slamming, the remote beepers beeping, uh, radios and all that. Um, and a nail salon works um, usually seven days a week, which includes Sunday mornings and Saturday mornings, which to working people and school children uh, are their days off. Uh, so I was concerned with the noise that that alone would um, generate with people living right next door. Um, I looked at the plans that I had yesterday and even the architect proposed a 15 um, foot buffer there. And that was, um, that's what he proposed. And I know y'all proposed a 25 foot buffer for that. With the plan as was um, presented tonight, um, I, I might be in favor of that. Um, it would take some thinking, but that's something that just came up. Also on the property, on my property, there are uh, large oak trees um, whose roots are over the whole area, including his property. So when the buffer, uh, no matter what size that you make it, um, you're going to run into roots you're going to run in and if you damage a lot of live oak roots you'll kill the tree um, so there also has to be something to consider but that's about it um, he does have in his building and his drawing he has 21 service stations um, that um, knowing many many places they all will be built at the same time but there's the possibility that you would have 21 clients and we many people many many people come in our own car we don't come in groups um, so um, you know that's another consideration for that uh, where is he going to park people who don't who can't make it into his area um, i don't know um, so that's like i said it's consideration this with having own the strip mall right in front of him at Main and Maybank. Um, I know parking and I know the difficulty in, um, I don't know if any of y'all are familiar with Sunrise Bistro, but if you go there on a Sunday morning, good luck with parking. And we supply all the parking we can. So uh, that's where I'm coming from. I know that. Um, I know when you overpopulate a, a bistro, a nail salon, with customers, they come with cars, and you have to put them somewhere. This all feeds into a residential area. So you're putting all those cars down Wapu Way, which is residential. Um, yes, we do own not only the adjoining lot, but the next two lots. Um, there is a resident on the third lot. So, um, you know, I think all this needs to be taken into consideration on the size of the project. Um, yes, I'd love to see new business coming in. I think it's well worth it to um, Johns Island. I also know that the county is doing a quarter project, uh, which is going to um, involve Maine and Bay Bank. Um, so uh, with all that, um, I thank you for your kind attention. And I hope you take at least some of my remarks into your consideration when making your decisions. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Anybody else present that is opposed that would like to be heard? To uh, respond. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> for the reasons there are so many sites that offer service in this, one of this gentleman's models is that he um, 
caters to something that I don't know a whole lot about, and that's uh, bridesmaids often have events where they rent a van and they go to breweries and then they go get their nails and pedis done before the wedding. And so that's why he would be coming. So they would not be all coming in their individual cars. They come as, a, as, a, as an event sort of like uh, opportunity. So um, I, you know, I'm, I'm very comfortable with this uh, design. I think we can make that work. Um, you know, uh, it's interesting that the noise from my parking lot is going to bother the people, but the noise from the parking lot behind it doesn't bother them. And they also used the lot next door on the other side as a parking lot for their strip mall. So they've got parking all around this, but the only one that seems to be of concern to their neighbors, or at least according to them, is the potential noise from my lot, which I just don't think we're going to attract that rowdy of crowd for, for many petties. Um, may have better, more experience with that than I do, but I don't think we're going to generate a whole lot of noise. And people coming out are not going to go down ball rollway. They're going to come back up today. So it's not like we're generating a whole lot of traffic down. Yeah. Um, then we will close the application to the public and now be open to the board uh, for discussion and uh, questions. I probably don't expect a whole lot of Harley Davidson drivers going, riders going in mm -hmm. for any penny. But, uh, <coughs> uh, Eric, if I'm just so because of the zoning, um, LB parking requirement is by the square foot of the building, not yeah, so, the tenant use in the building. So you have a base zoning which allows a the use. And then based on the use, you go to our table of required parking. And John's Island off the peninsula, it is my exhibit right here, uh, personal and personal service establishments. That's the best we can categorize and they also line into. Not including one food stores, requires one for 200. So you take the total square footage of 60 and 50 and you come up with nine. They were proposing 14. Depending on the use, that requirement could potentially change from one for 200 square feet to one for 350 or something. Again, whatever, you know, office is, I believe, one per 240. So, yeah. I guess my point is that for the most part, the size of that structure is going to mandate nine ten spaces, regardless of what the use is. It's, it, they have to meet the minimum. And, um, and looking at the lot, <clears throat> the building is allowed to go in that landscape. Well, it's not conforming. It's in the city now. It's not conforming. Yep. Um, because they're keeping the main front shell of the building and doing some renovation and reduction or demolition in the rear and adding um, this particular buffer within the certain distance of the intersection of Main and DRB can allow a building in that buffer, but with that, no other improvements. So the parking couldn't necessarily. Right, so when I look at that, I see the buffers and there's that small little piece of pizza. Right. Um, you couldn't get nine parking spaces in that small Right. You did a carousel, you could. <laughs> I guess it yeah. has to be. Fit right in there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I think that I know. The, so I think that the, the request <laughs> and the variance is justified. Again, the restriction that the buffer puts in, I do agree that they're doing a great job and keeping the 12 and a half feet along the SR1. Um, and that, that would be in favor of demolition. I don't know if we could specify the density of this plant. So it's a buffer type, it has a minimum uh, requirement for canopy trees, understory trees, and buffer shrubs. I agree with the group. Uh, consideration so a landscape architect will have to get involved and try and figure out a very good looking landscape to and, um, and then the opaque fence could be a wooden fence where you can hand dig holes and adjust post and then what i really is concerned about if it were to be approved is the um, if they are so successful and they are starting to attract more than 11 cars 
you know, it doesn't take much for grasses and shrubs to be kind of just, so you could see a conversion of just cars going in angled, you know, so there has to be something along this edge to hold it so that the 12 and a half foot is there. Uh, and you wouldn't want to put the fence there because then you want that on the property line right. so that you maintain right. the buffer. The idea is that property. they can meander a fence along the property right. line and then build something and BRB would get involved, you know, making almost like the, the, the architecture is, I think, interesting. And, you know, I don't know how BRB will receive it, but it's almost like this could become a cottage garden, you know, and have a little, not picket, but a little two rail, split rail or something, John's Island like, and then a good planting in there. But you have to hold that line. You can't, you know, we can't be driving by every week and enforcing that they're holding that gravel line or that asphalt line or whatever it what becomes. I was going to ask, is it, a, is it a gravel lot or? Or asphalt lot. No, it's, it's a permeable. It's a gravel lot. And, and that boundary uh, is, there's a lot of trees in it. So it's not like it's um, you know, easy to park a car right out to the property line. Right. Uh, there's, I'm sure the picture doesn't show that. But right. See. Yeah, you have to, the, pa the passenger, you know, you know, has to be able to get out that side. So it's not going to be like right on the line, but that's the function. Is, oh, I know we've been we're concerned about that property line, but the fence along um, Maybank, is, what what is that proposed to be? Again, the ERB will have some okay. say in that whether that's a. a but very is, is that is that, that one of the condition for reduction in that buffer? Yes. Okay. Yes, that's built into the condition with a screening element that shows. <laughs> so can we modify item three on the other screen? And a landscape plan done by a landscape architect registered in South Carolina mm -hmm. uh, versus, you know, me drawing some little circles and calling them out as you know, sweet grass and palm or something. Um, but I think that necessarily would be in favor of Eric's sketch that finds three to it and you know, making sure it was a registered landscape architect. Yes, I'll try to form what I'm going to say. <laughs> um, the neighboring lady that spoke, yeah. uh, you did pique my interest saying something about the trees on your lot. And I guess I, um, I'm curious on what side of the property is your property? So is that diagonal, that diagonal line? Well, I'm sorry, I'll go. It's a walk away. So when I was there, I noticed, and again, I'm being observant as I can. See these guy wires? Yes. They go up to a telephone pole. Yes. I witnessed a survey stake on the other side of the telephone pole. Okay. Had orange ribbon on it, so I assumed that was the corner pin. And then I looked down. I moved over to take this photo, but the trees were, as the survey shows, there. You know, there some are on her property that they picked up. Some are um, on the boundary line. Some are inside the property. So but, her property is lot two on this. Let me see if this one, actually one up right there. So, so this is this up the right the, the middle of yeah. So here's the yeah. power pole. That little dot is the power pole. So the pin was two to three feet over. You can see the guy wires that came down and then the trees. So this pine that you see in my photo, it looks like it's maybe five, four feet off the property line. It angles and then there's a little bit of a fence behind the, the structure of the house on it. On. And those circles are this the says, tree protection zone on grand trees? Uh, so this looks like it's a 724 oak that they, I guess the surveyor walked down the other side to survey pick up the wood fence and what have you that show here. Mm -hmm. And a 917 oak, and then a 23 inch pine that you see in my photo, and then a 5712 oak of multi-stem. So there was a lot of vegetation and trees uh, 
stems along that property line. Okay. And then how does the um, proposed plan interact with those tree protection zones? So my sketch? Mm -hmm. Well, it would definitely mm -hmm. bring all the parking off of it. That's the proposed plan. And like um, Josh indicated, they were providing a, you can see a, a three foot uh, measurement in there, but it's five to six feet off the property line. And I would bring that back to 12. And a half, 12 and a half feet. Half the required buffer. There's a pinch point between the corner structure. You got 24 feet coming in at your ingress egress, which is important because you'll have a stop sign, a stop bar, and then the parallel. So you got that little pinch point, and it widens out for your turnaround. Neil, it's a but, challenging lot. And and what is the tree down by the fence on the lower left? So that is a um, that's that that's that oak right there. Again, the pin was like very either you can see like a little post hanging out there. Mm -hmm. So that was like right inside the property line. So that's way inside the property line. Property line is the pin. So that's the front of the lot there. Yeah, so that's this. Oh, you mean maybe in the median, uh, in the side of the road, you mean? Is that what you're saying? So this tree here, yeah, that, that, I was standing right here taking that photo that way. So that's that was that oak there. You can see an old post, might have been fence post coming out of it. And this one looks like it's right on the radius. There was a, a property pin here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. No, it looks it looks as though the sketch that Eric worked on gives more room for those trees and um, addresses uh, this lady's concerns. So, uh, am I correct in saying that, ma'am? Yes. And and it surely addresses my concerns. So. Okay. Have any other questions or comments? I'll make a motion for approval with staff recommendations um, with the added um, um, condition that the landscape plan be by SC um, registered architect, the landscape architect. Second. Seconded by Mr. Coward. And all in favor say aye in favor. Aye in favor. Aye. Opposed, nay, not in favor. Motion approved. I'm sorry. Do you have the second again? Kelvin. Kelvin. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Next item on the agenda, the item B2 is 518 East Bay Street, TMS numbers uh, 459-1302-004-005-009-0011. Request a variance from section 54 327 to amend 15 protected trees per acre requirement. Request a uh, special exception from section 54 327 to allow the removal of one grand tree uh, zoned MU 2 SUH GB MU 2 WH pending. Okay, this is the application. This is SGA NW's. Um, Explanation of the request and hardship test questions. So this is is a assemblage of uh, five properties um, located between East Bay, Washington, and Charlotte. You can see that the uh, one property was like split zone, maintaining LI on a portion. MU to WH and then the remaining three are going MU to H and I don't know if that's been ratified yet by city council yet or not. But. So um, this building, 
has been demolished. This was a furniture warehouse, and that's where the split zoning basically goes through 5, 518. So that's gone. Moloff's supply owned this lot and used it for storage of uh, plumbing pipe and materials. So there was a land swap that went on that this lot is moving against their property. And then you have a vacant lot or lots that are uh, being used as gravel parking. Then you have a historic structure that's been abandoned for many, many years and it's going to be relocated. And then this remote uh, bank teller uh, structure will be uh, demolished. So we have a couple of protected and a grand elm tree to deal with. So uh, these are context type photos submitted by the, um, this is looking east on Charlotte. Note that tree on the top left. I'll come back to that. Uh, this is looking down the sidewalk. Directions. This is the historic structure that's been abandoned for a number of years. Um, the BAR approved it to be relocated. Uh, quarter shots and then the bank um, teller site. Again, that tree. Um, at first, it was proposed to be removed, but we had many discussions about that tree as a as a perimeter tree. And with the crown in a pretty bill, in a pretty favorable um, uh, meters going in a favorable direction away from proposed construction. So that came out of the uh, out of play for removal. So here's the existing condition survey with the uh, existing building shown that's now gone. <coughs> A lot assembled. This is a blow up, so we have the 20 inch live oak on Charlotte, and then you have a Bradford pear that's the orange. You have another very nice 22.5 live oak, but it's just too far inside the lot, which I'll come back to. And then a Ligustrum, which is really a cherry laurel, and then a hickory, and a hickory, and then the grand. Nope, the black dot on the east side of the Charlotte Street Land Trust. That's a 46 L, but it's actually a red mulberry. So the proposal is to build um, a residential structure with some mixed use on um, East Bay with a very large um, corner element being ramp and plaza and uh, uh, lobby type space. And then the relocated structure gets meshed into the plan here. The back portion of the structure that sits over here will be moved, is demolished, and then it's moved here and renovated and tied in, into the whole um, quarter element of the new structure. So there you see the adjacent property but that box next to the 20 inch so we had to figure out how close could we get to that oak and um, we're thinking we can get you know 10 to 12 feet away from the trunk still be okay the 46 inch elm is uh, considered a boundary tree we I questioned that and the architect and developer thought that they would maintain that and work the building around it. So you see parking at grade now there. Uh, that may have to change a little bit to preserve that tree. So there's a kind of a rendering of what the project could become after VAR and PRC, what have you. So you got the law office, the two-story historic structure, and then the relocated structure corner element with the plaza entryway and then in there you see some green in the center and that's working around that boundary tree so these are photos that the applicant submitted you see the 30 inch elm grade c 22.5 live oak at the top end north end of the bank teller 30 inch elm again hackberry bracket pair hackberry this Lagustrum is engulfed in bonds, but it's a cherry law. 
So these are my photos. So this is looking north down that eastern boundary, and you can see how the canopy of that red mulberry stretches over. So um, we just have to be careful with that and figure out, you know, I, there can be some chip shaping and frown reduction, but we can't just take the whole side of the tree off. And um, so I'll be parked there, and then another shot of it right on. Picture of the elm, cherry laurel, 22.5. So here's the live oak to be preserved. You see a little orange mark. I went out when we were discussing, you know, what should be the ideal distance, but we're going to that's that is looking straight up and looking at the drip line, if you will. And the tree does afford um, some laterals where we could cheat that in. And then, of course, the the elevation of the roof, you can see that it's been all bark under and what have you, but uh, that we incorporated into the, the plaza that in front of that new relocated structure. So staff recommends approval with the condition to plant 33 caliber inches of canopy trees on the project site and or a contribution to the city tree, street tree program. It's basically all building. Let's have a certified arborist develop a tree preservation plan for the 20 inch live oak will be approved by staff to include staking the building out to make final determination on the amount of tip shaping and crown reduction that may be necessary. Let's have a certified arborist develop a tree preservation plan from the 46 inch red mulberry on the boundary line that addresses no impact to the PVZ and the crown except for maintenance pruning, which may require Act 3 building improvements and building to be notched, if you will and provide a landscape plan for staff review and approval. Thank you, Aaron. Captain is present. So do you have any access to you yet, Doug? Um, Eric did a great job presenting that, and we are totally in favor of, the, of approval with the staff recommendations, although I do have one thing I want to discuss with Eric, VAR staff, and, and decided that we would preserve that 20-inch tree and move the Charleston single back. Initially, we were going to put the Charleston single up on the, on the back of the sidewalk like the Charleston single that's next door to it. And in discussions with Eric, Eric strongly encouraged us to keep that tree. So we did modify the design of the building so that we could push this, that Charleston single back a little bit. And when we went to BAR this last time and presented that, um, I even cited that immediately across the street on Charlotte, there's a Charleston single that is set back and has some landscape between the building and the street. And there are other places in Charleston where that occurs also. We did get some pushback from uh, Big AR, um, they expressed some disappointment that we were not going to be pulling that house up on the up to the back of the curb. I mean, back of the, the sidewalk. Um, that did not come from BAR staff. It came from the, the BAR itself. So, what I would like to do is um, ask y'all for some flexibility um, in your motion. Assuming that you're going to make a motion to approve with staff recommendations, um, that there may be some flexibility in there that if BAR requires us to pull that house up to the back of the sidewalk, that we have permission to remove the 20 inch tree without coming back to, to BCA again. Um, like I said, we, we have completely change the design to accommodate the 20 inch tree. I actually think it's a really good solution, but we've got a little bit of a catch 22 between what VAR might require of us and our BCA approval. Thank you. <clears throat> Anybody else present that's in favor that would like to be heard? Present that is opposed or would like to be heard? Is the application to the public and we'll come forward for discussion. Um, so, can I say one, thing? one other thing? Just, just so you guys know, um, we have also modified the building um, and continue to modify the building to accommodate that boundary tree. Thank you. Um, 
I don't, I don't know uh, quite what Sam. I want to tell VAR that the tree needs to remain and the house can go where it is. Because it's always the other way. Um, and the fact that on that street there would be another example of a house that's been pushed off and not right on it. On the street that I live on is just, you know, eight to ten feet between the sidewalk and where the fronts of the houses are. Personally, I can't read VR would prove the only mass thing because these are comments I always hear. Um, it's two little cute historic structures and then this <laughs> thing around it um, makes me think of the uh, Disney movie Up yes. uh, when the guy doesn't move and he's got everything built around his house. Um, but uh, I'm, in, I'm in favor of, um, of the application in Eric's and I, and I think that it would be a, a shame to remove that live oak tree. It doesn't have to be. I think being the far east of the tree. Is... The, the, the boundary tree, that's that's not surface parking. That's building that we're seeing there, right? So they're in a flood zone, and Bill, maybe I'll have to answer that question, but the rendering, it looks like building right, right there, right? You see, sure, yeah, yeah please. Yes. Um, yes, so that is two levels of structured parking with um, with courtyard space um, above the second level of parking. But we're we've changed the building envelope there um, to help accommodate that, that boundary tree. Uh, we may have to come back. We may have to come back with an encroachment, but um, we, we're going to be able to keep it. That's the goal. So I would say that you can add that if encroachment is required. We off staff to approve that, so we don't have to come back here. That would be good. Um, I kind of it, built that into my tree preservation plan. Required that um, address no impact to the TBC you know, and the crown. So, you know, is that a hard sticking to the 40, whatever that tree requires as a 46 inch or a little encroachment into the, the you know, the certified arborist feels there can be some encroachment on the yeah. and work with them. Yeah. So I would go with the uh, city's recommendations if they want to pose the application. To approve with staff recommendations. I second. Discussion beyond that, or you know, um, um, for the applicant, and I'm concerned if you get stuck between <coughs> our recommendation and the DR between two city agencies, or it's not his fault. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure out how to address that. I I support the motion, but I'm concerned. Your proof of that VR tells I think at that point, I, I hate to say it, but I would say if VAR said, no, you got to push it to the front and that tree must go, then we just have to come back and extend that project to another 30 days. Can we go back to the rendering? I just like to stress that VAR staff is supportive of keeping the 20 inch tree and moving the building back it was it was just really primarily one VA VAR board member and I uh, interject on that because I think if you deny the removal of the tree the tree has to stay by city ordinance and it wouldn't be any different than a setback requirement for instance the VAR can't overrule a setback so, okay. right. They can't overrule the tree protection requirement either. So it's my opinion. That's what I tell them. We're saving the tree. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Show down. Yeah, so I'm good with the two point. <laughs> All right. The motion was by um, uh, Ruthie for approval with staff conditions. Um, 
safety of 20 inch over 20 inch division it was seconded by uh, Jennifer. Um, no further discussion, then all in favor say aye in favor. Aye in favor. Aye in favor. Any opposed say nay, not in favor. That's approved. You're welcome. All right. I'm not put my video out there. That building is going to die. It's not like it's yeah, tucked like tuck up <laughs> inside of the building, you know? Yeah. I don't I don't think the concern should be with historical accuracy on this primary, personally. <laughs> they'll, they'll say that they put that building there and cut that off or something. Right, and I, I felt like that was more of the discussion. It wasn't the building versus the tree, it was the... They wanted it on the street. Right. They want they want that right there. You'll put, right. You'll put so they want it somewhere else. Conditions in, right? Uh, and write everything. Right. Right. That would be setting 